Recently, VFX artists got some cool new technology to play around with called Gaussian splatting. This is essentially a new method of photogrammetry. There have been some really cool music videos and video projects that use photogrammetry in some way. The ability to capture a moment and control the camera, add in 3D effects, add in your own lighting, just gives users an insane amount of control for the scene to create some really cool stuff. If you're interested in seeing how this works, I'm going to leave some links below breaking down the original research paper. This video is going to be an easy startup tutorial on creating creating Gaussian splats. Now we are going to use Blender for this video and to be fully transparent, Blender as of right now does not have full Gaussian splatting support. We're going to use instead a free third party plugin. We're going to dive into some cool things like particle effects, lighting and animating. The only other methods I know of for getting a Gaussian splat into a 3D software is to either use Unity, which is free, or to use Unreal Engine, which has a $100 paid plugin to add your Gaussian splats into the engine. Now I do think in Unreal Engine and Unity, you're getting a lot cleaner results. With Blender, you're not getting as accurate of results as you are in the other softwares, but you do still get this nice stylistic painterly look, which I really like. And it's super quick and easy to actually make these. We're not doing any modeling. We're not creating any materials. We're essentially just creating the splat from a video and putting it in. So keep that in mind. The good news here is as time goes on, things are only going to get better with the quality and become more accessible. Let's dive in and actually show you how to make a Gaussian splat. As always, likes are appreciated. Subscribe if you're new. Um, links to my website and Patreon down below if you want to check that out. Let's get started. So you can create a Gaussian splat locally on your computer. I'll leave a link below if you'd like to follow tutorial downloading the dependencies. What I'm going to do instead is use Polycam, which has free Gaussian splatting, which you can do on their desktop version. So it's up to you. For time's sakes, we're just going to use Polycam. From here, you need to load in your video. And specifically, it shouldn't be a actual video file. It should be a PNG sequence. So you can turn your video into a PNG sequence with any editor. It's very simple. For example, in After Effects, I recorded this video on my phone, just doing an orbit of this little coffee table in my living room here. And that's very important here. Make sure you are orbiting what you want to scan. Try and get all angles to get the best possible results. Once you've recorded your video, you want to go up to File, Export, and we can add to Render Queue again if we're in After Effects. The process is very similar across any video editing software you're using. Just go up to Format and we're going to select PNG Sequence, click OK, go down over here to Output, and you just want to create a folder for where this PNG Sequence is going to be. So mine is right here. You can see everything's all rendered out. Every single frame of the video is a PNG image. Now another thing to mention, the limit for Polycam is 250 frames. So in After Effects, you can see right here this number, which is the frame that you're at. I'm at 266. So I'm going to go over to 250 and I'm just going to use a little bit of time remapping so that I can get the entire orbit into 250 frames. So I'll just right click on my video. I'll go to time, enable time remapping. From here, you're going to see this keyframe at the end and the beginning. We're just going to drag the keyframe at the end to this spot at 250 frames. And now we should have the full orbit in 250 frames. So you guys can drag this bar here, right click and trim comp to work area so that you're only rendering out that 250 frames and then go in and render out that PNG sequence. So once you have that back in Polygam, you just select your PNG sequence that we have saved. So you can hold down shift, select all these frames, click open to load those in. So once this is done processing, we can click here to view our results. And as you guys can see, just really, really solid results. Now keep in mind here, our ultimate goal is to bring this into a 3D software so that we can actually change things around, actually render some videos and images from this. So it's not going to look exactly like this, but just from a raw scan perspective, you can see how accurate Gaussian splatting really is. So now we're going to bring this into our 3D software. So we're going to go up here and click download and you can download this PLY file. So go ahead and download that. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the only way to do this with Blender is with this third party free add on, which was created by Alex Carliera. I'll also leave his Twitter down below where he's been creating some really cool experiments with this plugin, like this steganography effect where it kind of transforms from one image to the next. Just click on code and click download zip. Once you guys have downloaded that zip file, it should look like this. Go ahead and just unzip the zip file. So I'm using WinRAR right here again for free. Here's what the file actually looks like once you unzip it. And what we need to do is actually get this Blender add-on folder right here with the init and the PLY file. You want to right click on this and you want to actually zip this back into a zip folder. So again, unzip the master folder, go in here find the folder titled Blender add-on, right click, 
and you can use 7-zip add to archive or you can use WinRAR, whatever it is you guys use to zip folders. Once you guys have done that, we can finally open up Blender. So in Blender, we need to load in our new add-on. So we're going to go up to edit and we're going to go over to preferences. In the add-ons tab over here, we're just going to click install and we're going to navigate to wherever you unzipped that folder. So here's mine. Again, you want to go in here again and you want to open up the Blender add-on dot zip. Just click install add-on. Once you've done that, you should now see this 3D Gaussian splatting. You need to, you can search here. Just make sure that that is enabled. Once it is enabled over here on this right, you're going to see all these little tabs. Just scroll down to 3D Gaussian splatting and you should have this little import Gaussian splat window. So we can click here. Now we can go to where we saved that PLY file from Polycam. Or again, if you did this locally, we're going to import it. Now over here in the object properties, just set the X rotation back to zero. It's just going to look like a bunch of diamonds. If we switch to the rendered shading viewport, we can actually see our texture already applied for you, which is very nice. Also, this only works in cycles. So just make sure over here in your render properties, you're not on EV. You're not going to see anything popping up. So the way that this actually works, the add-on is giving you this geometry node set up here, which you can go in and change some of these settings like the radius for the vertices, the size of the dots. So you guys can mess around with that. If you just go over to geometry node editor down here in the bottom left, we're going to talk about this in a little bit when we add in some different effects up here in the top right. This is the point cloud, which is fastest. If you uncheck that box, you can actually convert this to geometry and you'll have a slider to change the detail. This can really tax your computer. So I'm just going to keep it at point cloud for this tutorial. Just so my recording software doesn't crash, but just know that you can mess around with that. Now let's show you some cool things that we can do to actually create some animations out of this, create some video transitions. So for example, we can click shift a and we can add in any lights so I can add in a point light. Now you're not going to actually see the light doing anything for now because we need to select our Gaussian splat and we need to change over to the shader editor and you see here that the add on is already setting everything up all for you. Very nice. What we can do is go over to the actual principal BSDF shader and we can just bump up the specular to actually see this reacting with light. So I've placed this red point light inside of the skull. So you guys can add in whatever lighting that you would like. Another cool thing is adding our custom camera animation. So let me show you how we can set that up. Instead of adding a camera and animating by hand, we're going to use some curves to make it easier. So I'm going to click shift A and we're going to go to curve and I'll add in a circle. And then I can click S and just scale this up a bit. And this circle is going to represent the rotation of the camera that we're adding. So once you have your Bezier curve showing the path that you want for the camera, let's actually click Shift A and add in the camera. So we'll scroll down here, add in our camera. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Constraints tab with the camera selected. So down here, we can click right there. And we'll click Add Object Constraint. And we're going to add in a follow path constraint. So with the follow path constraint, we can just click this target and we want to select our Bezier circle or whatever curve that you added. So with the follow path, you can take this offset and just crank this value and you see how our camera is falling around the circle. We'll be able to keyframe this to get the animation that we want. First though, you see the camera is pointed at the ground. Let's just go over to the object properties and we can just change some rotation values so that the camera is looking where we want. Let's go ahead and just set up a little animation for the camera. So we're going to scroll at the beginning here with our timeline open. You can scroll for however long you want the animation to be. So I'll make this like 250 frames. You want to go over here to offset and set a keyframe at the beginning of your timeline, then drag to the end, click here to set that keyframe. So now we should have a keyframe at the end and the beginning so that we actually lock it in. And now you guys are going to have a keyframe animation of our camera rotating around the subject here. So next, we need to actually make sure the camera is always pointing at what we want it to point at. You see, it's just rotating to do that. I'm just going to click shift a again and I'm going to go into empty and we're going to add and we're going to add an empty plane axis. So you can place this empty wherever you want the camera to track. So I'm going to place it in the center of the table Then I'm going to select my camera once again and I'm going to add another constraint to it. This time we're going to add a track to constraint. So for the track two, we're going to go over to target and we're going to select that empty that we added. And just like that, we now have the camera tracking to the empty as well as rotating. We can also switch over to the camera view itself. Again, if you need to just select the empty. So now you guys should have your animation of your camera following the center, rotating around your target. Let's show you some cool things that we can do with the actual point cloud itself. 
So let's select the point cloud and we're going to switch back over to the geometry node editor and let's create a sort of particle explosion effect like I showed you at the beginning. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually add in a node. So we're going to click shift A and we're going to add in a set position node and we're going to place that after the set material and before the realize instances. So to do that, what we need to do is actually select the area that we'd like to transform or explode. And you can do that to the entire scene if you just leave it how it is. If you want to do it to something specific, we're going to need to actually separate it. So let's do it with the skull. We're going to select the point cloud and click tab to go into edit mode. I'm just going to select some of the vertices at the top of the skull like this. Once you've done that, just right click here. We want to go down to separate and separate by selection. So now in the top right, you should have a second version of our object of our point cloud. Now with the second point cloud selection selected, what we can do is go over to the geometry nodes and we're just going to click this little copy button right here to copy the geometry node group so that we're creating a duplicate of this that's separate from the original so that we're only changing the top of the skull and not the entire geometry node group for everything. Now what we can do is click shift A and we can look up vector math. We'll add that in. We're going to change this to scale. Next, we're going to click shift D on this vector math and we're going to change this one to subtract. We're going to plug the subtract into the scale like this and then we'll take this scale, put that to point one. Next, we're going to drag out from the top socket of the subtract and we're going to add in a noise node. So let's actually plug this into the color socket, not the factor socket like this. I'm going to go back over to object mode to actually see this a bit better. For the subtract node here, make sure all of these are 0.5. And then of course, make sure that the scale here is plugged into offset for set position. So now what you should see, if we change our scale value, we have this sort of explosion of the skull, which is pretty cool. You can keyframe this value as well. So you can hover over the scale value and click I to set a keyframe. We'll just start it at zero for now. Then we can switch back over to the timeline and you can drag for however long you want the explosion to last. Maybe like this. And we'll pop back over to the geometry node editor and we'll just bump it up. And then very important, make sure you hover over this and click I again to lock the keyframe in place. It should change from orange to yellow. And now we should have an animation of the skull actually exploding. And sorry if everything is very laggy, uh, point clouds are very taxing on my computer. So my recording software may be a little bit stuttery, but there you go. So we'll just go over to our output settings and we just need to go over here to output and create a little folder for where we want all of these frames to output to. So I already set up a folder. You can just click here to create a new folder and place all of the rendered images into there. Once you've done that, just render and render out your animation. So once you have rendered out all of those frames, let's actually bring this back into our editing software to piece this all together. I'm going to go back into After Effects and in my project bin, I'm going to right click and I'll go to import multiple files. We're going to find wherever we set up that render from Blender and just select the first frame and click import and then I'll click done. So here is my render. From here you can add any color correction, you can add glow. What I did was I went up to composition comp settings and I just added a bit more time to this comp so maybe like 15 seconds for the duration. And from here I can just drag this over and then drag in my original video clip that I took off my phone and I can make a little transition where it goes from our normal video footage over to our rendered Gaussian splat and I actually did this in Premiere instead of After Effects. You can do that with a little dynamic link. So you go to project in Premiere, you click this little button in the bottom right and you create a transparent video. Once you've done that, you drag the transparent video into your timeline and just expand it a bit. And then you can right click on this and click replace with After Effects composition. That'll give you this linked comp right here. So you can see Gaussian Splat linked comp. You just drag in the composition that you set up from After Effects into there. And now you'll be able to see everything in After Effects in Premiere. And from here, I just did a little bit of speed ramping just so that it sort of picks up speed right at the end. And then I also added a little flash transition from my transition packs, which you can find on my website. This one is from Speed Demon 2. So that we get this sort of all-in-one motion, fast swivel flash, from real life into our Gaussian Splat. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I think Gaussian Splatting is awesome. Just seeing what people are doing in Unreal and Unity. I'm excited for things like this to trickle down to Blender. Very fast workflow and you get a really cool effect and transition that you guys can use for your video. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.